Uh, welcome everyone to this edition of the Verifiability Talk. It's my honor to introduce our speaker, uh, Mahsa Varshusaz. Uh, Mahsa uh, is an assistant professor at the IT University of Copenhagen in Denmark, um, where she does research in software testing, uh, but also in program repair. She has a, a forthcoming paper at ACM Tosem on the topic, very exciting paper. Uh, she is also managing the project on testing underwater robots called Romero. Uh, I hope I got the name right. Uh, she, uh, <laughs> PhD uh, from uh, University of Halmstad in, um, in Sweden on uh, software product lines and testing software product oh, lines. And she will be talking about um, formal specification of reinforcement learning today. Uh, thank you very much, Master, for having joined us uh, today. Um, the talk will be recorded and we will uh, we may post it on YouTube uh, when we receive the permission from the speaker. So if you don't want to appear in the YouTube recording, you can join as a guest and turn off your camera. Thanks again, Master, and the floor is yours. Okay. Thanks, Mohamed, for the introduction. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, I hope that you can all see my screen. And uh, uh, so, yes, thanks for the invitation. And uh, it's my pleasure to give this talk today. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to talk about formal specification of reinforcement learning, which is um, a joint work with uh, Mohsen, who is a PhD student uh, in our group, and Andre. Uh, both from IT University of Copenhagen, like me, and uh, Einar, uh, who is from University of Oslo. And um, just to give a little bit of uh, context about uh, this uh, work, so this work came about as a part of uh, a larger project that we have on um, applying formal methods for safety and um, uh, for safety of reinforcement learning uh, algorithms. and. Uh, um, during uh, this project, we have been uh, going through several descriptions of reinforcement uh, learning uh, algorithms and problems uh, in the literature and trying to implement them. And through this uh, process, uh, we were really interested in testing the implementations that we have and testing the correctness of the implementations. And uh, we faced several, and faced several challenges for testing uh, such implementations and uh, this is how this work came about and we have started um, documenting the challenges that we have and uh, the approach that we have towards addressing them. Uh, but uh, let me uh, start with uh, just a simple example of a reinforcement learning application. So in this example, we have an agent, which is a car that is moving in an environment, which is a horizontal uh, road towards a static obstacle. And uh, the goal here is that um, is uh, for the car to brake uh, before reaching the obstacle and also avoid sharp brakes for the sake of the passengers. And uh, in a reinforcement learning setup, uh, basically uh, the agent, uh, we are, our goal is to learn a control policy uh, such that uh, the agent, which is the car, uh, would uh, uh, starting in any position on velocity would select a deceleration an appropriate value of deceleration based on the control policy to a stop uh, before the obstacle and avoid the crash and also uh, to avoid a sharp break. So um, in general, to make it more concrete, we assume that the state of space, which is a combination of velocity and position of the car, is discrete and uh, there's a the finite number of um, values of deceleration from which the uh, car can uh, select. So uh, in a reinforcement learning uh, setup, usually there's a representation like this, that uh, uh, we have uh, the value of a set of possible actions in all possible states here. Uh, in this case, this is the range of states that we have, and we have a set of actions. And what uh, we are interested in is to know what is the value of uh, taking in, in in each each action in each of the possible states uh, in the long run. And usually uh, the process is as follows that we run a set of experiments. For example, in this experiment, the car uh, takes uh, this value of deceleration and it stops before the obstacle. So it, uh, it's a, it receives a positive reward. And there are some experiments that the car would crash into the obstacle and then it would receive a 
negative reward and we run such experiments over and over and over and hopefully uh, these values would converge uh, to some final values and based on the values that we have uh, we would know what is the value or consequences uh, consequence of taking each of these actions in each of the possible states um, and based on this representation that we have uh, we would obtain a policy that would tell us, okay, what is the best action to take uh, in each of uh, the states um, or in each of the possible states. So, okay, assuming that we have obtained a policy, but uh, assume that the policy that we have achieved uh, would not avoid a crash. For example, we have uh, a state where uh, the suggested action by the policy would lead to a crash. So there's a lot of work uh, around evaluating the policies that have been obtained through the reinforcement learning uh, process. Uh, and there's a lot of research around that. But the question that we are interested in uh, to answer in this work is that, OK, assuming that something has gone wrong in the policy that we have uh, obtained, um, is there any in which part of the reinforcement learning uh, process a book has uh, happened and uh, whether we can find a bug in each of the components that are involved in uh, obtaining the policy, which is the result of the re reinforcement learning process. So in order to answer uh, this question, then our goal is to develop a partial correctness a specification for reinforcement learning and um, also another goal is to develop an understanding of how to test uh, these reinforcement learning setups and possibly propose a method and uh, eventually understand uh, what we can verify about these reinforcement learning setups. And the side outcome of uh, our uh, work is a well-tested high assurance uh, implementation of the reinforcement learning algorithms. Uh, that we cover in this work and also a test harness that uh, can be adapted for uh, other reinforcement learning implementations. So just uh, since we are talking about uh, specifications, uh, I would like to just mention that the uh, reinforcement learning uh, problem can be uh, by problem here. I mean, the combination of the agent and environment and their communication. Uh, can be formalized uh, by a topple like this. And this is, there's nothing surprising or new here. This is a typical formalization of the problem. So we define a set of states and we uh, also indicate what are the initial states. Um, and uh, we have a set of finite uh, action, a finite set of actions. And uh, one thing to notice is that we have an observation function and uh, that would map the states of the environment to a set of observable states. And uh, through this observation function, basically the agent uh, sees the world around it through this observation function. And this is how the agent perceives uh, the world around it. And the transition function uh, is also a probabilistic function because we would like to uh, capture the uh, stochastic nature of the uh, environment um, that the agent operates in. And uh, we have a reward function that based on the uh, state that we land in an action would give us a reward. And also we have a um, function that would tell us whether we are in a final state or not. So this is the formalization of uh, the reinforcement learning problem. Uh, and uh, but uh, now let's uh, move on to reinforcement learning algorithm uh, and see how we can uh, find a specifications or uh, obtain a specifications for uh, reinforcement learning algorithms. So in this work, um, we mainly focused on a class of reinforcement learning, uh, which is temporal difference learning algorithms. This is a well-known class of algorithms. Uh, that in which we start with um, a, an estimation of the value of actions in the states, and uh, we uh, correct that estimation by observing the future 
uh, rewards and set of states that we can reach uh, throughout the experiment. And um, basically the update as a like the general update rule for the estimation uh, of the value of uh, each action in the state uh, would be something like this, that uh, we start from, we correct an old estimate that we have by um, considering the difference of uh, the new uh, tar a target value, which uh, is a result of observing uh, the reward and uh, the value of the states that we land in throughout an experiment uh, with the, uh, in comparison with the old uh, estimation that we have. And this correction would be applied uh, or would be discounted by uh, a step size or a learning rate that would tell us how important uh, this new observation is and how much we want to uh, we found this new observation have an effect on the old estimation that we have. So this is the general uh, how we can describe the update rules in uh, TD learning. But uh, let me just uh, give a concrete example of the TD learning and explain what prob what are the problems that we have observed in description of these uh, algorithms. So um, a well known example of TD algorithms is SARSA. So on the left, you see uh, a pseudocode, which is a very typical description of uh, a reinforcement learning algorithm that one would see in the literature, in the reference books, or in the papers. So here in SARSA, uh, the, in the first line, we say that, OK, we start from a, a state, we select an action based on a policy, and then we start a loop that it says that while uh, the, we are not in a final state, then sample the environment by executing the action, observe the next state, and uh, observe the reward, and then select the next action uh, in the target state based on an, a policy. Here we say epsilon greater policy that is derived from the uh, Q, which is the value function. And uh, then we update uh, the old estimation of the value of uh, A uh, in a state S, ST uh, with uh, based on the ob new observation that we have, which is uh, the reward that we have seen and the value of the estimation of the value of uh, the target state and the selected action. So this is a very simple um, uh, TD learning algorithm. And at the end, we are going to replace the new uh, action that has been selected with uh, the action that we are going to continue with. And, uh, the new state with the old state, and we continue in the loop. So uh, this is a typical description uh, that uh, we always see, and also usually it's, this description is supported by a backup diagram, and the backup diagram usually captures uh, all the steps that are explained in the text, uh, just uh, in a, just provide a visual representation. Um, so all these steps are. Uh, implicitly connect to, connected to different elements of the backup diagram here. Uh, but uh, the main problem in uh, the description of uh, the algorithms that we observed while we were moving towards implementing these algorithms is that there's a lot of uh, details uh, that are hidden uh, in the text that are very relevant uh, for the implementation and um, can lead to and not having those uh, details explicit uh, in the text would can lead to uh, bugs in the implementation. For example, uh, the reward function is there is, is a result of the agent um, taking an action in an step. So taking an step uh, by taking an action, going to a next state and observing the state. So um, then I observing the reward or achieving the reward is completely related to two of the elements in the uh, reinforcement lear re learning problem that uh, I showed before in that talk also. It's related to two function calls in the implementation. And um, for example, uh, the new action or, or the next action that is sampled also uh, is uh, relevant or is dependent on the policy that we are following that and the policy uh, in turn is depend on dependent on the uh, uh, q uh, function and the q function can change 
over time. And this type of relation is also completely hidden uh, in such uh, description or in the text that we see here. And also some of these uh, symbols that you see or the variables that we see in the update rule are random variables because of the uh, stochastic nature of the functions um, that return those. And this, again, this is not something that is visible in the description, but one should know or have some domain knowledge in order to be able to implement or reach a correct implementation by just going through the description. So um, then we observe that, uh, so this is the simplest type of, uh, let's say, TD learning that only depends on one step or the update only depends on one step. So, and uh, the, this, the algorithm can become more and more complex because there are TD learning algorithms that uh, depend on several steps. So the update is not only dependent on one step ahead, but on several steps ahead. So the description can become more and more difficult and complex. And uh, considering all these details that uh, remain hidden, uh, leaves a lot of room for uh, having bugs in the implementation of the algorithm. Another observation that we had is that there's a lot of, uh, on the other hand, there's a lot of commonalities between uh, TD learning algorithms. For example, uh, expected SARSA is uh, another algorithm that is very similar to SARSA. And uh, the only difference is that uh, instead of uh, sampling the next uh, action, we take can expectation. So we calculate the value, the Q value based on not only the sampling the action, but taking an expectation over uh, the possible actions in the target state. So we see that there's a um, uh, lot of similarities or commonalities between this algorithm and the algorithm for expected SARSA can be just achieved or can be obtained by replacing um, how, how we calculate the return. And this is... Uh, the case for all other uh, TD learning algorithms and as they become more and more complex. So uh, still the update rule can become more and more complex, but there's a lot of commonalities and there's a lot of uh, steps like sampling and taking expectations that are similar uh, and common between uh, different uh, TD learning algorithms. So, Going back to the challenges, so we know that, uh, as I explained, there's a lot of uh, details that remain uh, hidden in the description, but at the same time, as uh, the, the algorithms become more and more complex, and uh, for example, the number of uh, steps um, in the algorithm, at the number of uh, steps in the algorithm, um, in the algorithm increases, then uh, the description also becomes more and more complex. And uh, it can expand over several lines. So then going from the description to an implementation becomes even more difficult. And also the monolithic presentation of the algorithm uh, makes it difficult to really exploit uh, the commonalities between the algorithms um, or the similarities between the algorithms in the implementation. So having these observations uh, of the details that are missing in the description are also the similarities between the algorithms. Um, we, uh, we decided to propose a, a compositional domain, a specific language called BDL that can describe the back of diagrams that, uh, are repre that, that represent the TD updates uh, or the update rule in the TD algorithm. So this um, uh, BDL is a term language, and this is the grammar that uh, would um, give us the syntactic representation of BDL. Um, so here you can see that there are uh, two types of terms. We have estimations, and uh, estimations are basically uh, simple steps throughout the back of diagram, and then we have the BDL term um, that is a sequence of estimations and uh, at the end includes an update, which is the last part of the diagram, which means that this is the point that we are going to update the uh, value, uh, the Q value. 
So using this uh, syntax, we can build up uh, different uh, or, or we can represent different uh, TD algorithms. For example, SARSA uh, can be represented uh, in BDL uh, like this. So we have a sample uh, step. And then uh, we have an update. We have another sample that is uh, with an update. So we have another sample with an update. And the parameter, uh, the parameter that we see here, for example, here gamma is uh, the discount factor that we are going to use uh, for accumulated rewards, and uh, alpha is a learning rate. So that's why we include it in the. Uh, that's why we include it in the syntax. So now we have uh, a domain-specific language that we can use for describing or representing the backup diagrams uh, that can in turn represent the TD updates. So, and this is the representation for a range of TD algorithms that um, here you can see the description of the algorithms in uh, the BDL language. But now, um, given uh, so given this syntax that we have for BDL, uh, we can define the denotation or semantics of each term in the BDL language, which in turn would give us an interpreter for BDL, uh, which can give us uh, the semantics for entire backup diagrams, which we can use as specifications for uh, TD updates. Um, and in this way, so as we are composing different terms in the BDL language, we can build uh, entire backup diagrams and using the interpreter that we have. Uh, and by given that our semantics is compositional, we can get the uh, specifications or uh, entire semantics of a backup diagram at once using the compositional rules that we have. So the semantics uh, of the BDL language uh, is described like this. So we describe the semantics uh, for each term uh, in the BDL language. Here, for example, you see the semantics domain uh, for the estimation steps in the BDL language, which can be either a sampling like this in the backup diagram, or it can be an expectation, like getting an expectation over the set of actions in the backup diagram. And uh, in the uh, semantics domain, uh, we have uh, the Q value or the Q uh, value function, and we have uh, a state action, and we have two values here. Uh, the first one is the return uh, that is calculated per step. That uh, is basically the reward that we observe per step and the value of the next uh, state. And also, uh, we included the discount factor, uh, the discount factor that should be used for discounting the reward that we are observing uh, as a part of the semantics domain because uh, we would like to make the uh, semantics compositional. So we need to keep this as a part of the semantics domain. Um, and the result would be a probability mass function on the uh, set of estate action and uh, the reward and uh, the discount factor for the next step. And the reason that this is a probability mass function is that uh, a part of uh, the functions that are included in the semantics are probabilistic, which I will show in a minute. For example, the transition relation is probabilistic. So we define the semantics for each of these terms, each of the estimation terms. And uh, for example, the semantics for a sample a step uh, or a sample uh, a step in the backup diagram would be something like this. And as you can see, this is very similar to what we saw. So the, here uh, on the right hand side, you see the description of uh, each of these lines that are included as a part of the semantics of the uh, sample step. 
so um, we just start by uh, taking a transition or executing um, action AT in a state ST, and then we achieve uh, or get the reward uh, using the reward function based on the target state that we have landed in. So here we are pointing the uh, target state that we got from the peer reviews step. Uh, using and um, use function compositions here, and this is a term. This is a Dirac um, probability uh, function. So then we get uh, one uh, value for uh, the reward, which is passed through the next step. So and then we also observe the uh, target state. Um, and in the next step, we select the next action using the policy and the queue uh, function or the queue values that we have, and given the next uh, state or the target state that we have. And then we also calculate the return, which is uh, based on the observed reward in the current state and the discount factor in the current state, and also the uh, return that we had from the previous step. And then we accumulate the discount factor to pass it through the next step. So the discount factor for the next step. And this is the set of values that uh, are returned by uh, this function. As you can see, this is very similar to what we saw in the description of, for example, salsa. But uh, the main difference here is that um, what we see here, we exactly see what is the relation between, for example, where the reward would come from or where the next action would come from and the dependency uh, of the values that we get in each step to the actual elements that are in the um, uh, problem description or the from, in the formalization of the problem description. And it uh, makes it more explicit and um, it removes all the ambiguities that there are in the uh, normal descriptions of the algorithm that we see. Uh, and uh, similarly, we define the semantics for the entire uh, a, a BDL, which is uh, basically representing the uh, semantics of the entire uh, backup diagram, which is a sequence of estimations and uh, followed by an update. And uh, this, uh, the semantics for a sequence of estimation can um, be, we can get it just by uh, composing the closely composition of the uh, functions uh, that we have defined, uh, followed by uh, and the meaning of the update uh, rule. So basically, we can define uh, the semantics in a similar manner for uh, a BDL term as well. That can be also a, a, a sequence of estimation, an update followed by a sample or a expectation which happens, the update happens always at the end of the back of diagram. So now that we have, so we have defined uh, the semantics of each term in uh, this domain specific language that uh, can, can give us the representation of different types of uh, backup diagrams. So we map uh, each, basically we have mapped each element um, in the, backup di diagram with a function and the semantics of the entire diagram can be achieved just by function compositions uh, which in turn uh, when we have the sem semantics of the entire entire backup diagram we can consider it as a, um, a specification for uh, different uh, update rules uh, and so and as um, this semantics is self-contained uh, and it, um, it is useful because it also em eliminates all these uh, ambiguities that uh, exist in the normal description of uh, the algorithm that uh, are shown before. And it can help us to reason about uh, different algorithms and also it can help us with in comparison of different algorithms as we can just get the description or the specification of the algorithms automatically by just composing um, the functions that are associated with each element in uh, the backup diagram. So I will just uh, let's just 
I will just give an example of how we use these uh, specifications that uh, we have obtained uh, in the testing. Uh, so the long-term goal that we have is to uh, build a parameterized test harness that we can use for uh, different types of reinforcement learning algorithms. But in general, in the framework that we have, we are using um, uh, property-based testing um, because in property-based testing, what we need is, or what we start with is a set of uh, partial specifications and uh, we have a set of generators that um, we use for instantiating these partial specifications, and which would lead to having several test cases. And then we can run these test cases against implementations of the algorithm, uh, and the result whether would be fail or uh, pass. And this, uh, as implementations in our framework, we are have uh, implementation of a range of uh, reinforcement learning problems on algorithms uh, in a functional programming framework that uh, I will show just uh, towards the end of the talk just briefly. But um, what I would like to mention here, here is that the categories of tests that we consider uh, in this setup. So the type of tests that we have, we distinguish uh, the tests that we have for reinforcement learning problems, which is the test that we write on um, environments and agents, and uh, also the test that we write on re for reinforcement learning um, algorithms. And also we have, uh, on top of this, we have uh, two categories, other two other categories of tests. Some are specific, so there are some tests that are specific to a reinforcement learning problem, or um, a reinforcement learning, uh, a specific reinforcement learning algorithm. And there are some tests that are just generic. For example, there are some tests that apply for any reinforcement learning algorithm or, um, or any reinforcement learning problem. So we distinguish between these uh, categories of tests. And uh, I will just give some examples of uh, uh, this type of test that we have in our setup. So uh, one example of tests that we wrote for uh, re reinforcement learning problems that is generic and should apply for any reinforcement learning uh, problem in this framework is that um, the observation function uh, should be total. And um, the observation function is basically a function that relates the uh, uh, that re uh, links the environment and uh, the agent to the uh, the world around and uh, to the algorithm basically. And um, what is important here is that um, any state in the environment or uh, any state of the environment can be observable or can be uh, seen uh, or can be mapped to an observable state. And in order to, so here you can see that just a logical statement that uh, in general states this uh, property, but in order to have an implementation or test this in a property-based uh, testing framework, it requires that we have generators for, uh, for example, environment states. And um, our test harness requires that uh, the problem definition should include these generators. So whenever we implement um, agents and environments as a part of the templates that we have, we are required to uh, implement or provide this type of generators, which can be used uh, um, by the test harness and for testing uh, such properties. And uh, as a result of um, the totality of the observation function, we have another uh, generic reinforcement learning um, uh, problem test uh, that says that, uh, so this is a closure property for the transition function. And we say that uh, starting uh, in a observable state by taking a, a step or making a transition, uh, we should land into another observable state. And uh, for example, the implementation of a test 
So this is the general logical statement that represents uh, this property, but the implementation is something like this in a property-based testing framework. Here, for example, we have uh, quantifiers uh, over um, the variables, which are here uh, we have a state and action, and uh, we can define preconditions also uh, on this set of variables. And then here we have the code, which basically represents taking an action and observing the target state. And uh, at the end, uh, we check the, we have the post condition where we check that the observable, that the state that we are seeing is indeed within the uh, range of observable states in the problem definition. Another example of um, testing um, RL problems for like a, a generic uh, test is that, so sometimes we would like to test for um, convergence, which is uh, difficult. Uh, this is difficult to test in general, but uh, we can test some specific cases of that. For example, we can test that uh, the accumulated reward uh, that we have throughout uh, the learning process uh, stays within the floating point range and we don't have overflows because uh, having overflows uh, of the accumulated report can be a sign of uh, either a bug in implementation of the reinforcement learning algorithm or in the reward function. So in this test, basically what um, we are combining the, both the reinforcement learning algorithm and also the implementation of the reward function. So um, such, for example, this type of uh, properties can be used to check also the combination of uh, uh, the component, components in the reinforcement learning setup. And then, uh, as an example of um, um, testing reinforcement le learning problem, but the, the tests that are specific to, uh, to um, a problem here, for example, for the braking car, uh, the example that I showed in the beginning of the presentation. Um, so this is just um, like a, 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 pro um, a, a property of the like the domain. For example, here we say that um, a forward moving car cannot move backwards by braking. And this is the logical statement that expresses this. And uh, the implementation of um, a property uh, that is stated like this would be a code like that. Uh, here, for example, we have a set of generators that generate a set of positions and velocities, and then we have quantifiers over uh, these variables, which in turn would get the values uh, using the generators that we have here. And then here we have the code, which is basically checking that um, uh, after taking a step, the new position would always be greater than the original position, given that uh, um, the velocity, the original velocity has not been uh, zero or has been greater than zero. And as you can see here, uh, the implementation of the test also remains very close to the logical uh, uh, description of the property uh, that we have. And uh, as an example of the uh, uh, of the properties for uh, the reinforcement learning algorithms is, uh, for example, testing the epsilon greediness of a learning algorithm. So the epsilon uh, greedy policy in an epsilon greedy policy in general, um, the policy selects a random action with probability epsilon, and otherwise it just selects the action the best action greedily. Um, so it would select uh, the action with the highest value. And in order to uh, test a property like this, uh, we define a Boolean variable that represents uh, selecting uh, the highest um, value, the action with the highest value, and we check that um, this value has uh, or 
is uh, distributed according, uh, according to a Bernoulli distribution uh, with this parameter. And in order to check a property like this, we need to run, uh, uh, run several experiments and uh, requires a statistical testing, uh, uh, which we do using Bayesian inference. And uh, so here I'm not just going through the details, but I would like to just give examples of the type of properties uh, that we have for uh, these RL setups. And uh, last is um, another example of the uh, properties for uh, reinforcement learning algorithms. Here we are uh, using um, the, uh, the BDL language that uh, I described before. So this test it says that the implementation and the specification produce the same multivariate distribution, uh, which so in this case, we have uh, an algorithm uh, that is an algorithm under test that can be any direct implementation of the reinforcement learning algorithm. And on the other side, we have um, uh, the description of the algorithm in BDL and uh, the specification is generated using the BDL uh, interpreter. And then we, all, we check uh, in order to see, uh, we just check that the, the produced distribution uh, are the same uh, by the system under test and what was produced by uh, the BDL, um, by the specification that was uh, obtained from BDL interpreter. So this is uh, this basically would uh, give us a possibility to post check uh, direct implementation of reinforcement learning algorithms with the specifications that we have, or uh, check different algorithms against each other as well. Uh, so we have an implementation of uh, a range of reinforcement learning algorithms and their tests. Uh, and um, the implementation is around 2.3k lines of purely functional Scala tree code. And uh, many of the tests, also uh, these were just examples of uh, the properties that we have. We have a range of properties that are generic, some are specific uh, for reinforcement learning algorithms and also problems. And um, several of these tests are just reusable uh, than, and can be instantiated for uh, new algorithms and problems uh, that are implemented in our framework. So the, these are just examples of the uh, problems that uh, we have implemented. Some of them are just traditional examples that uh, appear in uh, reference books uh, or in the literature. And also we have an example of an industrial case, which is um, a, a, a control system for waste management and uh, wastewater management. And this is just inspired by an industrial case and came about by, uh, from a collaboration with um, an industrial partner. And all the code is available in a public uh, Git repository as well. So just to evaluate uh, the test harness that we have so far, uh, we used uh, mutation testing. So we used a mutation testing tool for Scala uh, on uh, a range of reinforcement learning problems and algorithms that we have. And uh, we checked and we checked a mutation uh, a score and in almost 75% of the cases, uh, we observed that the mutation score is above 90%. But another interesting, um, uh, another interesting uh, observation from the experiments that we had was that uh, only considering the generic uh, tests, um, so just excluding the problem specific uh, tests, uh, and only including the generic ones that can be applied to any reinforcement learning algorithm or any uh, reinforcement learning problem. We see that um, for all cases, the mutation score is about 40 is above 48 percent. And this tells us that, OK, uh, just considering this uh, generic test can give us uh, for a developer of uh, a reinforcement learning algorithms um, 
can give a very good uh, start to not to start from uh, scratch and can uh, give uh, can be very valuable because this means that uh, a range or at least a range of a good range of uh, bugs that can appear in this type of setup can be captured using uh, this uh, generic test that can be reused between different reinforcement learning uh, setups. So just to conclude, um, I've presented a formal a specification for key elements of backup diagrams in temporal difference algorithms and the translation of uh, the above specifications into um, a test harness. And um, as future work, what we would like to do is to extend this framework for other uh, reinforcement learning algorithms because so far we are focused on the class of temporal difference uh, learning algorithms. And also we would like to extend the framework for richer uh, value function representations because we can have considered the tabular representation in our implementation. And uh, thanks. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Martha. Okay, it was very interesting. Uh, we have time for questions. Are there any questions in the audience? I could start with one if there is none at the moment. So um, I was intrigued by your evaluation using um, mutation. What what mutation operators did you use in the implementation? Um, yes, so we can, so in um, the mutation testing framework that we used, uh, there were mutations on uh, logical operators, if I remember correctly, we added ourselves because they didn't have on mathematical operators. We added that ourselves. Uh, and um, okay, I do not remember. There were a range of operators that uh, are considered there, but I think the most important ones were the logical operators and the mathematical operators that were there were the ones that were most effective considering the implementation of the algorithms that we have. These are basically generic mutation operators that. Yes, yes. So it was not. Uh, yeah, exactly. So this was not something that is specifically for reinforcement learning setups. We looked for works like this, like for uh, mut mutation testing tools that uh, are tailored for reinforcement learning setups, because then the mutation would be more meaningful. For example, if we uh, consider the structure of the agents, uh, environment, and uh, algorithms separately and have some meaningful mutation of the code, but uh, we found only one work uh, for which we couldn't find any code available. So then we couldn't uh, basically apply mutation testing that is tailored for reinforcement learning setups, but just a gener generic uh, mutation testing framework for a scholar. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Um, are there any questions from the audience? I have a couple of more questions, but uh, I wonder whether anyone else could, wants to. Yes, Raúl, please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. You. Oh, nice. Uh, I moved to a room, so. Well, thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a question about the language, uh, uh, the BDL language. I was wondering yeah. whether it. So any. Uh, I don't know how to call it. Um, formula or term in that language, does it correspond to a valid reinforcement learning algorithm or can you also make, uh, I don't know, invalid uh, algorithms by using your syntax? But it covers all the reinforcement learning algorithms uh, that we've seen in the like common uh, or in the common references for reinforcement learning, uh, especially TD learning algorithms. But also, uh, it corresponds to, I mean, there are some, we can of course build some algorithms that maybe they have not been described or don't exist, but there's one work on uh, unifying representation, representations of TD algorithms, uh, I think by Sutton, that um, they describe all these different combinations. Of course, they are not used in practice. So maybe the ones that are used are Q-learning SARSA or the ones that are known, but uh, I don't know why it would mean to have invalid uh, combinations. So, yeah, but of course you can make up some algorithms just by combining terms that 
maybe they have not been used in practice and maybe it would be interesting to look at those as well. And for the maybe the other que question for the properties, do you also have a language or I, I mean, at some point you start to, to show properties, but I was not sure about the syntax of them, because at some point you combine a specification and implementation or is that more like freestyle? You can write anything there. Yeah, no, we don't have a specific language. We just describe them this usual, uh, some logical language. It's not anything specific and then just translate it into a property based uh, test. Uh, again, for a Scala. Yeah. So do you use a Scala check or what do you yes, use? Yes, we use a Scala check. Yeah. Uh, regarding properties, so you, you show the property that had more to do with the physical uh, description of the system. So laws of physics, basically, rather than controller that you're specifying in in, um, in reinforcement learning. Do you distinguish between these type of properties? Uh, uh, which one? For, or what should hold for the environment? I think mm. this, yeah, this is basically a property of... Uh, of the, the dynamics of the car uh, rather than the controller right uh, yeah but you don't distinguish between these different types of properties do you no no mm -hmm. is it useful to distinguish between them because i i suppose many of the properties mostly have to do with, with the controller rather than the environment right or well, I mean, making this uh, separation might be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but we don't explicitly make or distinguish between them. I'm just thinking of may, uh, like the case that might, it might be useful to do this type of uh, separation. But um, yeah, I, I cannot think of uh, any special case. Uh, and, that and while, would be useful. While you were talking about generic properties, uh, one very generic class of properties that came to my mind were uh, like comparing the behavior of uh, reinforcement learning to to random, uh, so to ra a random choice of actions and also a random ah. uh, set of policies. Uh, does that make any sense or? Um. I mean, of course, the point is um, here, the, at least among the, uh, given the properties that we have defined, what we can compare is that whether uh, the distribution that we achieve, which would be, let's say, uh, a value function, let's say it would be a distribution over the value function is the same as uh, any other algorithm, and we can make that type of comparison. But I don't know, I mean, what are we comparing there? If we are comparing, uh, let's say, random selection of action, of course we can compare whether we can achieve the same type of uh, value function uh, just by randomly selecting actions or by following a specific policy. We could do yes. that type of comparison, but... Um, I guess many of the reinforcement learning algorithms are types of search to, to reach a goal state, right? So you could search whether and the expectation to reach that goal state, uh, for, for example, the expected time to reach that goal state or, or the expected probability of reaching the goal state is, is better than random, uh, either better than random weights for reinforcement learning or better than random choice of uh, actions. Mm, oh, OK, Prob probability of reaching those. Mm. Uh, we do not do, I mean, we don't, we have not written properties like that, but yeah, definitely that, that would be interesting. Uh, to formulate that type of properties. But at the moment, no, we do not have that type of properties uh, among the ones that we have defined. Pro probably in general, being, a, be able, being able to compare different, uh, uh, different algorithms in terms of their performance, so probability yeah. of reaching it could, could be interesting. Random is just one, one specific case, but uh, in general, you may want to compare. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, also in terms of comparing the implementation of algorithms in, in general, for example, we have some interest in tense because uh, there are some algorithms that are specific cases of other ones, let's say, uh, given like the value of parameters that are involved. And we can um, 
basically do some kind of like differential testing between the implement implementation of the algorithms yeah. using the tests that we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. Good. Uh, are there any burning questions before we close this uh, session? We have two more, three more minutes if there are any questions. If there are none, thank you very much again, Mahsa. This was a very interesting talk. Uh,